This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Live from Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, in the Sorgatron Media Studios, it is the awesome cast. It's time to get geeky, get nerdy, and get gadgety here. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, uh, podcaster and video professional here in the Pittsburgh area. And we like to bring in a lot of uh, uh, professionals of the creative and technological uh, uh, fields with us back in here uh, after after a vacation. I got to watch your vacation on Facebook. That was fun. John Chichilla, gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. Hey, how's it going? It's good to be back. It's, it's a little less beachy. A little less beachy here? A little less beachy. And I know we didn't get the brick wall. I know. I know I'm, we didn't I'm get the brick wall, but we, we did put something else up on the walls. What would so. you call that? What would I call the, 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 the sound absorption? Yeah, like what's the, what's the pattern? It's not a brick pattern. It's not a brick pattern, but it's uh, I don't know, Missy. What, what would you call it? Alternating tile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure there's like a Windows three one version of that for as as a background. <laughs> I think there is, and I think I had it. <laughs> I think you're right. Also with us is that Jagoff, John Chamberlain uh, of uh, yajagoff.com. Uh, thank you for joining us. Well, I appreciate the invite. I mean, how could I not? There's sliced pizza here. Mm-hmm. I smelled it from eight miles away. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. So, of course, you, you jagoff.com and the you jagoff uh, podcast. Um, you know, what have you guys been up to lately? I mean, it's been a while since we've had you on the show and, and had an awesome chat with you and everything. Yeah, well, I've, I got to say, I guess it's been exhausting, I think we'd say, right? <laughs> no, uh, in the last couple of weeks, we pulled off uh, our summer porch tour that we do on the podcast, which you guys were a part of last year. And uh, and we pulled off the flute tog at the River Regatta. And then I pulled off a six-day stint of doing social media and little videos and stuff uh, in Florida for six days right after that. So Nice. It's, so um, this is like my first day of relaxing in the last three weeks, I think. And we made you come out and do a podcast with us, so. Yeah, like I said, there's sliced pizza here. You don't make me do anything when there's sliced pizza. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you to our sponsors there. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll get into the awesome things and everything here in a moment. But first, please check out everything at awesomecast.com. You subscribe to this and as, and as well as other things like our awesome ch- our awesome tips that Chill has been doing with iPhone and Android devices. And we're already talking about doing some new ones here in the future. As well as our awesome chat came back, at least for a moment. Uh, as I got cloned last week with our friends at We Clone You. So if, uh, if you so so i think we're starting a kickstarter to see if we can get a nine inch tall version of me because it's about 120 bucks but we got the scan done guys and we got a fun little gif and you can check out some of that process over there on that video and that interview with uh with the we clone you people that were really great uh to, to have us hang out there and big thanks to our friend rob brown who helps us with a lot of the video production with uh, wrestling coming in and helping with uh the filming of that as well uh but you can also subscribe to awesome cast on the itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio and of course video versions on the awesome cast facebook and the youtube page we are streaming here live every tuesday night at 7 p.m eastern time uh on the facebook page or live.awesomecast.net um and also we are inviting if you want to come in and sit in and be uh, our studio audience let us know um at either at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com our contact pages or twitter at awesomecast um or even uh, responding to any of the events that we have up on facebook um to this and we'll make sure we have a chair out for you and you can hang out with us uh, as part of the awesome cast as well um and also thank you to our streaming partners of course the river's edge uh, river's edge pgh.com you guys listen to them on the uh, live stream here before we get started as well as our friends at the 405 media who are carrying us here um uh, 9 a.m pacific time every weekday you can uh, catch up with the awesome cast over there so thank you to both those guys uh getting the awesome cast out to a lot more ears and we really do appreciate it also we appreciate our patreon supporters patreon.com 
slash awesome cast, including our friend Matt Weller, out there at the other end of the state at the Coffee Club $5 level, and as well as, 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 well as our good friend Michael Fedor at Mike, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter at the $1 fan of the show uh, level. Thank you guys for supporting us on a monthly basis here. And you guys out there, if you want to support the show, again, we legit have like light bills to pay around this podcast now. Uh, we appreciate it. And, of course, uh, the Patreon supporters between this and the Wrestling Mayhem Show are one of the reasons we stepped ahead to uh, kind of upgrade things into a new space like this, at least part of that consideration. So thanks to that. Um, as I'm getting distracted by people pulling up here, because I'm still not used to this window thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, are they pulling into like, now we my know. window? Now we or? know when to show up here on Tuesdays and distract Sorg with certain things at the window. Exactly. Oh, well, there's there's some interesting campaigns that, that might start <laughs> soon that I've been hearing about. Uh, so let's get into our awesome things of Bef- the week. Before we get into the awesome things of the week. <laughs> yes, I, producer I, Missy. I do have to make a comment. Hmm. That we share our love of Slice on Broadway every single week. Yes. And we, we made the comment that Jagoff came in just for the Slice on Broadway. And I love the fact that they responded back and said, well, that's cool too, but we also love the show. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you to Slice on Broadway for loving the show as well. Because if you love the show half as much as we love your pizza, that's awesome. Bing. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Awesome. So, Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? What is my awesome thing of the week? I um, had to do a Snapchat. <clears throat> yes. So, Snapchat announced a a new, I guess, capability called CrowdSurf. Did you hear about this? Ooh. So, what they're going to do is they're going to partner with, I'm guessing they have to partner with the band and the establishment. But what they're going to do is they're going to take all of the snaps at concerts and stitch them together to make one cohesive, seamless video from all the different snap perspectives. That's awesome. That is awesome. And we've <clears throat> we've talked about like some other apps that were supposed to do this too. And but everybody already has Snapchat, so it makes sense. Well, and the interesting thing too is um, Snapchat said that they actually built some proprietary machine learning technology to automatically recognize the audio and sync everything up and make sure that everything is, is, is cohesive. The inter- the one thing I'm interested in is are they going to have a couple plants or whatever in the, in the audience to make sure that if, if there's a segment where no one's snapping, they're not going to have any snaps to take that portion. Um, and especially we're talking about snaps. So we're talking about 15 seconds at a time. Right. So you got you to have a lot of people continually snapping to get mm-hmm. an entire concert. <clears throat> I hope they take this and allow it to be released as like a downloadable. Like even if I had to pay 20 bucks to watch an entire concert or whatever, kind of like you do with the DVD, to be able to watch it in this methodology, I, mm-hmm. I think it's pretty cool. I've, and, and it's a... I think it's a good competition for you're, you're seeing a lot of uh, I can't remember who it is now. There's there's a couple concerts coming up where they're going to be all on Gear 360 and it's going to be all VR and you're going to be able, anyone can watch for free. Um, hopefully they they allow this that same type of thing. I hope it's not gone in two days. Right, right. Like it is something you can experience. Um, man, and it's going to be varying quality, so that's that is going to be interesting. Or is it is it one of these cases where this is only going to happen at a concert that is like at a console arena, I'm sorry, PBG Paints, I can't even keep up with it, <laughs> or Heinz Field or, or something huge like that, right? Where like your chances of somebody snapping at the same time is a lot greater because there's 40,000 people in the stadium, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, versus, you know, 500 at a, at a concert venue. You know, it seems to make sense. Yep. And they said that it's going to be at select events, so I'm guessing it's going to be based on, to, to your point, you know, where it's at. Mm-hmm. Um and then I'm guessing they also have to have agreements from whoever the artist is up on stage. I, I, 15 seconds per clip spread out amongst people that, I mean, you don't follow everyone at the concert to be able to do this yourself. Um, I'm guessing they're not just going to do this if the if the musician doesn't want it done. Well, and that, <clears throat> coming from the legal background that I have, um, that adds a lot of other, like, privacy issues and things. Like, how are they going to filter that out? It's, like... I have a, I have a thirteen-year-old kid going to a concert. How does my thirteen-year-old kid not get shown on somebody's Snapchat inadvertently? 
that yeah maybe maybe it's part of your agreement and showing up to the concert or something i don't know P- potentially but i, I like I said yeah. I, I just i think that that's kind of another aspect of it that i'm curious about mm-hmm. just in general yeah i think there's a lot of things to as, as you sit down and start to think about it much like what, what you're going what you're talking about i mean i'm i'm sh- I'm sure they've thought through some of it, but it. I'm wondering how immature it is because even in the article, uh, in Gadgetnet said they, they reached out to Snapchat to elaborate, which will get this seamless video treatment, and then there's still no response. So and they're also un, uh, unclear on how widespread the feature will become over time. So uh, hmm. more more to come, hopefully by the end of the year. <clears throat> so do you see that you're the tech? guys and girls do you see that as a way to grow snapchat to make sure snapchat doesn't go by the wayside like periscope suddenly and those kind of things is is that absolutely absolutely just trying to build the brand that's been a big part of the conversation this week right was is snapchat is now down financially they didn't have a good quarter because basically facebook and instagram are eating their lunch yeah with with features by just copying everything so then now you go to well is this something facebook can just pick up on too right and they are going to have more um you know they're going to have more depth of people you know than maybe a snapchat i don't know i guess it depends on demographic of the concert right it probably depends on demographic of the concert but i i agree that it's definitely trying to get keep them out keep them out in front because to your point i feel like snapchat does it first and then everyone else copies it and they have the larger population Mm. and, and the larger user base and facebook definitely has a lot more money yeah. Um. So it's okay to be second <laughs> if you're Facebook, right? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. okay to be second. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially when you when you look at Facebook, I, I've heard, and I, I don't know if there's been any concrete evidence, but I've heard you know Facebook wants to run, uh, run for the we're going to create like a YouTube type TV. Um, where they're going to do shows like Hulu does shows or Netflix mm-hmm. does shows. So there's going to potentially be Facebook originals. And this is where I think you're, or why you're seeing the Facebook apps on your Apple TVs, on your, on your different platforms, because the more devices that, they're, that are out there that can watch the Facebook video, whether it's live or pre-recorded, <clears throat> the, the larger the audience they can reach than just beyond a phone. Absolutely. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see if, if Comcast or, or Verizon or AT&T or whomever start to pick up, like on their cable boxes, you know how over time people have started to add the Netflix app and the Hulu app. Will we see mm-hmm. that hit that penetration? I think you can get it on certain Samsung TVs and certain uh, other TVs, but I, I haven't seen it from like the big cable companies yet. Right. All right, John, you jag off. What's your what's, what's your what's your uh, awesome thing? You know, and, I uh, and, and is it surviving food talk? Yeah, yeah, I do have to think. I know I'm a week behind, but uh, I do have to think that the awesome thing for me in the last week or two has been just to see the flu talk come to Pittsburgh. So mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. me, it was totally awesome to have it in Pittsburgh. And, you know, it, it, I think it's, what, a dozen times or less that it happens in a year around the country, or around the world, and, and Pittsburgh's in the middle of that. And I couldn't believe, this is where I'll slide in the little bit of technology that I do know, in that the production level of that event was absolutely incredible. It was, you know, pro, pro sports level of production with video and, you know, the cables run all over the place, the jumbotrons, the, the hosts in the in-game or in entertainment uh, interviews that went on, the coverage of it all. It was just incredible to me to think that I can't, you know, I started to look at all the wires that were run through the north side and all the time that was put into it and the rules and the oversight. I can't imagine the amount of money that goes into that. Certainly Red Bull gets enough out of it, I I guess. But uh, I just couldn't believe it. It was totally awesome to think. And, you know, how lucky were we to have just an absolutely gorgeous day day for that particular event great sunshine great backdrop and all that kind of stuff river was a little sloppy but but i didn't go in it uh but no i just so my awesome thing was just basically i can't believe pittsburgh is getting noticed by all these cool things that you know they want to come here and do these kind of things well and it's really cool because i know katie talked about this a little bit last week Mm. uh, with, with her experience with it and you just mentioned that the production quality of it we had mentioned how cool it was we had an event here 
that same day. So we didn't get a chance to actually go down and you know cheer on our friends. But we had it up on the TV because mm. of that production crew. Mm. And it was amazing because they had like the, the drones yes. overhead and everything as part of the production. Yes. Now, our sad part was that the drone that we were watching for the Scarehouse uh, craft, <laughs> it like veered off just as it went off. So we, we missed its actual launch. Oh, okay. And it came back in. Like it was just the camera angle was, was weird and it shot out. But uh, no, just like you said, to have that much involved with people literally throwing themselves into a river <laughs> yeah i mean and it was uh what three months ago we went to one of the preface parties and they they even did some interviews in the back room at uh at uh tequila cowboy and i don't even know if they even used that but they interviewed us on a couch you know as a group like the ellen show or whatever it was and uh and our so the drone for us they they uh they asked for our login for the for the Ajago facebook page mm-hmm. so they put it through the Ajago facebook page mm-hmm. and so our whole piece was on our own facebook page mm-hmm. for 24 hours which was again just just totally totally cool and uh and then i guess they're going to give us the, the footage and all that kind of stuff yeah, so well actually I, it's on your page right now oh is it that's where uh, i'm pulling this from oh there you go i see yeah, <laughs> yeah. so there's there's you in your in your robe and and uh, uh talking <laughs> about people that here. would be a house coat in a babushka <laughs> <laughs> No, was I was, amazing. everybody said, who are you wearing? I'm wearing Goodwill, uh, thanks to Amanda Narcisi. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Uh, so you guys can check that out on the Yajagoff Facebook page, that video. Just under their video section, it's actually oddly the one with no no text on it. So. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and again, that's something that has like 5,000 views on your uh on the coolest thing was to just stand up on that deck and look out and see. I think they said 200 some thousand people on the North Shore. Oh, jeez. And it was totally cool to look out and see all those people waving terrible towels and screaming. And, and that's the thing. Like, the regatta usually has a draw in and of itself. Yeah. The number of people that came just to see this Flugtag event, I can imagine, like, exponentially yeah. increased that number. Absolutely. Yeah, it was crazy. Crazy. It was fun. So it was awesome. That's great. Uh, my awesome thing of the week is um so i've been following mike elegant for a while and uh, he's uh i think he was a former uh, writer or editor at a pc magazine he's part of the twit network of course um and he is the the digital nomad uh and uh and and i always like listening because he's his, his phrase is if you can work from home you can work from rome right and uh and so he has legit done that like he has packed up the family uh, I think mostly just his wife because I think the kids are in school or something. Uh, maybe not. It might be school age. And he's like gone to Rome, lived lived, lived in other lived in Spain for a while, I think, right? Um, and done. And he's a writer, so it makes sense, right? Uh, so he has this perspective of you know how the internet is here and some other cultural changes, and and again, kind of working when you're not tethered to a desk. Um, I got to share this this week because he's actually gone through this thing called Gastro Nomad where him and his wife are doing this thing about eating um, in different cultures that they've learned from their digital nomadness, I guess. Um, so there's a really good one, uh, uh, article this week on uh, gastronomad.net if you want to check out his articles. Um, and, and, you know, and of course, under the, the this is the art of working everywhere in this. And I thought I thought I'd chill a lot on this one. He's talking about how, what he selects for his work. When he's when he's out and about here in these other countries, and, and in this case, it's a 10.5 inch iPad Pro, uh, the Apple Pencil and the AirPods, you know, a wireless Magic Keyboard, things like that, and and a, and a nice case. And he talked about some of the things you need to watch out for, like if you're showing an Apple logo, Apple devices have a really high resale value if you steal them. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to be flashing your Apple logo when you're in a foreign country. So you need to make sure you cover that uh, with, with a nice case, with something like that, in, you know, in, the, in these cases. Um, so it was a really cool thing, and I was hoping it would be a nice introduction for people to maybe check out more of this site, too. Uh, against gastronomad.net. Chill, is this one that you, you follow as well? I, I like haven't you- followed this, but I will now <laughs> because I love, <clears throat> I love hearing about what people use when they're on the go. Mm-hmm. Um, so this even just following along you know the the what he's using to protect the device what what peripherals he's using i'm interested to see how this grows over time so i'm definitely going to be be following this awesome so check it out um and, we, and that really informs too because i mean there's a lot of tips in there like if you're just coffee shop hop right mm-hmm. or or i'm working in you know maybe i shouldn't be flashing the apple logo if i you know in some neighborhood i don't know in new york city 
right? When I'm when I'm traveling, and just domestically, you know. I mean, those are tips that kind of make sense. We've even gone through it from a from a corporate perspective, thinking about not just having the Apple logo on there, but if if you have a company and you put your corporate logo on that device, mm. think about it. Now you have a high price device that's available to resell with a decent amount of potential data on the device that the data could be worth right something. right so if you have so your <laughs> so if you have your big bank international that people will identify because they're a big bank mm -hmm. right international internationally <laughs> uh <laughs> then yeah absolutely you'll be like oh that that that, that ups the importance yeah, right? i think think of, think of it this way if you if you saw a ipad and it had the it had the Disney logo etched into it, not just some sticker on the back, right? But if you had like the Disney logo etched mm -hmm. into it, there there could be pre-release movies on there. There could be all yeah. kinds of things. Oh, see, I would I would just assume that that was like my daughter is a huge Disney fan. And I got Disney etched into <laughs> the back of it. Super fan, or yeah. or that guy that came through customs and had trouble had like you know property of NASA on his phone <laughs> etched in, you know, something like that. So so that's where I, I mean, definitely the devices are a target for the device price itself, and then when you think about the companies that are using the device, whether whether it be like a Microsoft Surface tablet, an iPad, whatever. Um, the data on the device can sometimes definitely outweigh from a from a what you're going to fetch on the open market. It could outweigh what the what the actual price of the device even is. Absolutely, absolutely. Jagoff, are you putting your Jagoff stickers all over your stuff? <laughs> no. You know what's interesting? Make sure though, nobody wants it out. A down. few years ago, when I worked in the medical field, uh, really we took we used to have branded <clears throat> uh, bags that we gave all of our staff to carry their computers around and and we took those branded bags away because the branding was a medical a large medical facility in the Pittsburgh area and it you know there was a smash and grab of a of a company laptop mm -hmm. which had data on it and so with it being branded we took all the branding off we really did i mean it wasn't literally on other than an asset tag on mm -hmm, the computer mm -hmm. but in the bags we took all the branding bags away because it just said this is who this is and there's probably some good stuff on it just like you just said medicare numbers whatever it might be yeah yeah, yeah absolutely uh definitely something to consider there right um and you know what you know what you need to consider so speaking of branding our friends at Slice on Broadway have these awesome boxes now, so you know exactly what pizza you're carrying into the studio, right? So, <laughs> I will tell you that I have gone into Slice and say I'm only here because of Mike Sorg. <laughs> we're we're told I, I'm, I'm told I don't know if this guy's actually doing it, but he's going into Slice and says Sorg sent me, takes his pizza and leaves. Oh, so I don't know if that. <laughs> I did <laughs> that. I did that once when we were at the at your other place. I did do that. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so we appreciate all, all of you guys again supporting Slice on Broadway, who supports this and other shows on the network. Uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, and of course down at PNC Bank, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, as well as Main Street down at Carnegie, and of course our home location just up the street on Broadway, Slice on Broadway, the OG, the original, right up there. Um, where we have a lot of kind of festivities going on there. We've had our own pizza party. We actually had a, our friend from the wrestling show. Uh, uh, he's having, he was moving out to Columbus, the poor bastard. And, uh, and he, had his, uh, he had had that last slice before he goes out. So we really appreciate that. And they've been really great to us uh, every time we do come in there. And also some wrestling fans in there. I really appreciate that too. So uh, <laughs> go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Support them. Um, check them out. Tweet them. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. All right. We got a couple of submitted articles. Man, I just... This is one of those I, I'm like having trouble wrapping my brain around, which is really kind of uh, fitting, I, I, I suppose. Uh, Chris Whitlatch uh, is, uh, you know, looking out for all things gaming um, and, and the future of gaming for, for sure. And he gave gave us this article from the Daily Mail: "Virtual reality games you can control with your mind." This startup unveils the world's first brain-controlled VR unit. And there's, you know, it's, it's basically an HTC Vive with a little extra hardware on it. You know, it looks like kind of the stuff from the, that beginning scene of the Ghostbusters movie. Um, but, uh, and of course, uh, I think it's MIT? No, no, I think they're out of MIT, I might have read. Um, but basically, yeah, they're trying to uh, get this going. Uh, 
Chilla, have you looked at any of this brain controllable stuff? Like, again, I, there was a lot of technical gobbledygook I couldn't get into here. I, I, I have not <laughs> read about this, but all I can think is like Star Wars Jedi simulator. Mm-hmm. Like, I can become force sensitive and start moving stuff with my mind, and I will never take the headset off <laughs> and they, and uh, they, chilla's wife if you're listening make sure not to get him one of those mm-mm, mm-mm. and uh here's a here's a little video of them so apparently i think he's 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 selecting objects here in this game um the, the game is called awakening according to this which lets you uh pick up objects stop lasers so there's your jedi mind tricks and even turn a robot dog into a balloon using just your thoughts so there's a little bit there. I mean, it's going to be very, it's going to be very rudimentary, right? To begin with. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and you grow from there. I mean, every, every, everything like this, it, it starts out that way. So, uh, Jack, are you, are you looking forward to mind controlled games? <laughs> mind controlled? <laughs> I might be dead by the time. I might need mind control games. Well, by there you the go. Time. Yeah. There you go. Uh, no, man, I, you know, all. Well, I don't know, you know, I don't know where that's headed, but it, it is kind of scary in a way when you think of that Facebook story this week of the two Facebook pages, you know, accounts talking to each other and they have to shut it down. Do you know that? Oh, they, they created their own and language. And I think, wow, yeah, and they created yeah. their own language, like twins, you know, like twin yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, And I think, well, that's kind of like control. Who knows what's going to happen there? But, uh, no, uh, you know, I, I think it's exciting. It's it's like anything else. It's good technology that we can use for good, but obviously we can make a movie out of it and do it for evil and have some superhero <laughs> kill them. Absolutely. <laughs> it, it'll, Absolutely. It'll be interesting, too. <clears throat> what was the... Remember when Google Glass launched and they were doing the kind of walk-alongs for people that couldn't physically get to specific locations? Oh, yeah, it was uh, basically dropping people in Street View that couldn't, like, that couldn't... But you could go on a photography walk with, like, a group of people. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? And and when I think of, I mean, when you think about what this opens up for people with disabilities... Yeah. That, that, ...that can't maybe navigate a PC very easily or navigate a computer... To be able to use this, I mean, think of think of what you can offer them... We already have, and we talked with, I think it was Hacksbox that we talked to. Uh, they were an Alpha Lab company. Mm-hmm. Um, they were specifically trying to create controllers for people with certain disabilities, so it's a, you know, based on whatever issue they had, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about ALS stuff. Um, I think we talked about it a little bit on this show back in the day and over on the Unsung show we used to do, um, you know, eye control and things like that. So um, this is another, I mean, this is another phase of that, really. Well, and to be honest, the implication that I'm looking at it, and this is kind of taken off as something you just said chilla you have somebody who is homebound you know that they can't leave and you know they they really want to go to the louvre for instance taking them to louvre is not going to be so you pull it up on the computer and it's still you're looking at a computer but if you put them in like this 3d space they can turn and i think it would be more of more of an experience under those circumstances it, and I'm thinking it too from but we're we're doing some stuff with VR photography, three three sixty degree photography and video at work. And we've been messing around with the video, but we want the user to be able to guide themselves. Mm-hmm. And with a video, you don't get that opportunity. Exactly. The user can't walk through the space on their own. Right. Mm-hmm. They they have to watch and they can look as the camera moves around, but they can't they, they can't experience it for themselves. And I feel like this would give them the ability to flow through a space mm-hmm. with, with, with their mind. In that, is it a pre-recorded type of thing where they can still move it? Or is it a drone that's kind of flying through the Louvre or whatever you said, Missy, mm-hmm. that kind of I'm controlling from a distance? Yeah, that's the thing. I, well, it kind of depends on how you set it up because I think, I think, generally moving through a space can like I have to recreate the space in 3d mm-hmm. whether that be like how street view does it where you just kind of plaster pictures all over everything around you and, and make it look like you're in the middle of something and you move from basically segment to segment right um, or did I re- recreate it with 3d polygons right um, yeah I don't know about that connection of mind controlled drones may be a whole other issue <laughs> <laughs> together you know the FAA, the, the FAA will just like explode. Our minds will explode over that one, ironically. Uh, so, um, all right, let's. Here's something a little more fun. 
Um, this one, M- Missy, were, did, did you find this one based on, like, you saw the meme and you saw that there was more to this? Uh, I love this because you, you explained this to me and then I saw the visuals and I couldn't, I couldn't get enough which, of it. Which one are we talking we're about? We're talking about Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. So, Ikea, <laughs> apparently Ikea noticed that... No, it wasn't Ikea that noticed. They, it what wasn't it was, them that noticed? What no, happened? It was, it was one of the design people who, who actually, like, if you've got the article up there. It, mm-hmm. it says that one of the people who works on, like, costuming and set design had an interview or something of the sort. They were talking with somebody, and they specified that, oh, yeah, when they're doing that, that's completely a rug that we got from Ikea. And we're talking about this picture of uh, Jon Snow with his, uh, you know... The, the fur that they're wearing. Yeah, his fur is kind of is kind of cloak thing that's going yeah. on there. It's interesting because they actually commented, I think they... The act like in the actual show this week they commented on Sansa's like what she's wearing and it, I'm not giving any spoilers out here but they they definitely drew attention to the wardrobe uh, on the show yeah so it's and it was kind of like a fur like this so it, it's interesting timing that you know as the show's saying hey look at this yeah you, you would have thought they would have parlayed it into hey we're gonna sell a whole clothing line but if this leaked out, just go to Ikea and get a $79 rug. Yeah, it turns out it's a $79 rug. There it is. If you're looking for the scold out there. And uh, <laughs> the, the thing is the Ikea, we're all familiar with Ikea. They, they have those nice little easy to easy to figure out how to put it together. Well, that, that depends on your opinion. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they have the instructions in, in the little box that tells you how to put things together. Okay? Yes. I, I'll, I'll take the easy part of that, that out of there. <laughs> so they completely leaned into this whole, they took these rugs and they made them into these costumes and they have put together, essentially it's a new Ikea item that tells you how to make one of these. <laughs> so what, what is it called over there? I, I see you've got it pulled oh, up. Oh, uh, is the Vintor... Hold on, let me let me pull it up so everybody can see it. Uh, Vinter Skuldervaner. Skuldervaner. <laughs> there you go. And uh, so you take the you got your little, your little guy. You need a pair of scissors and one rug, included in package. And it shows you how to cut it in the circle in the center, and it shows you how to put it on the little IKEA guy. Uh, and uh, oh, and apparently you need to grow a hair and beard and get a sword, and you're ready to go. And be, and you'll be ready to take your vow, says the article on on boardpanda dot com. Uh, and there's there's a little Photoshop of everybody. So what will be their... the first disclaimer that comes out because somebody injured themselves doing this, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, here's how to make this rug. Now somebody's going to hurt themselves, burn themselves, cut their finger. Well, get your safety and scissors, and you'll be okay, exactly. right? Exactly. So, you know, well, yeah. here's here's the question. I mean. You're going to get as hurt doing this as you are putting other, together any other IKEA mm-hmm. furniture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trust me. Seriously. There's Spoiler alert. alert. Next Game of Thrones, they put together a dining room table. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, is I just tweeted out, when you find out IKEA products are featured in Game of Thrones, but not the way you think. <laughs> nope. Nope. Mm-hmm. So a fun little. I like the beard, though. You like the, you like the, you like the <laughs> IKEA guy beard? Yeah. Now Sorry. here's here's the question: Did the IKEA guy have the beard before or after he put on the vintner? Oh, what do you think you do with that little circle you cut out? <laughs> Just get some glue and you're good to go. It's a totally green answer, Mike. That was there awesome. There you go. Yeah. There you go. You use every part yes. of the deer. Yes. Um. Anyways, <laughs> we got some other stories going on here. Um. So I, I thought this was a fun a fun thing, and, and I feel like this has happened before. So Chilla, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but there was a silent ten se- ten minute song climbing in the iTunes charts. So, uh, uh, and I'm I'm guessing this is just be, uh, on uh, Apple Music. I'm pretty sure here. Um, so basically, when you plug your uh, your your phone in the car stereo, and, and I think people with iPhones, uh, this must be a general thing. Like when the Bluetooth comes on, I hear the first track off of Z Trip every time because it's the the first in the sequence of the alphabet of everything I've downloaded off of iTunes, right? And then it'll shuffle after and that. Then it'll shuffle, right? Mm-hmm. So this one, and so it, it it was a similar situation here where. Um, uh, uh, th- this guy released a song, and it's a ten minutes of silence, and he named it "A A A A A A A Very Good Song." <laughs> so now it plays on everybody's phone that has it every time, 
And it right now, as of this article, it was at uh, number 67, ahead of Kendrick Lamar, Kesha, and <laughs> Selena Gomez, <laughs> the Chainsmokers, <laughs> and a lot of others. Um, so... So there you go. I, I said, this is not a new trick, though. I, this has ha- definitely happened before, right? I've never heard of it being that long of a blank song. I, I don't. I have never heard of this happening before. Okay. So what 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 will be interesting is will will Apple rewrite the shuffle algorithm mm-hmm. to not always start with the first song in your library alphabetically. Yeah, where's that feature? Because I'm really <laughs> hired, I'm really tired of the drum beginning of that song that I've heard so many times. You always times. hit. You always the, or like the first song comes on, tap next. Or if you're like everybody else, you have just the U2 album on there. That's true, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we had like an old like iPhone 3G that we plugged into uh, a dock in the kitchen, and that was our music player, and it went, like basically we play Pandora on it, and that's it. But every time you plugged it in, if you didn't do anything, you're you're hitting here you're hearing Bono, mm-hmm. you know it's just like it's like auto Bono, um, <laughs> but uh, you know it, it's it's kind of the problem when it's a music player first, right? Did, now, did, does it say why he did ten minutes? I have no idea. <laughs> no, I don't think it does. Uh, Chilla, what what is this about me not leaving the theater? So, and I think we we may have covered this company in the past oh this is familiar movie is there pass? an update on this <clears throat> movie so, pass so movie pass i think when we covered it it was like 30 dollars a month um which was kind of at that brink of am i going to make it to 30 dollars worth of movies um for the month and at that point in time i think they were in like 15 theaters mm-hmm. well movie pass now works with 91 percent of the theaters across the country including amc C- cinemark regal um, along with some independent chains, um, they've actually been. It sounds like from reading between the lines in this this article, they've they've hit some financial hardship, and they're they're trying to get more people to the platform, but still continue to make money. If you remember the old Dell model, right? If if we sell a million million PCs and we make five bucks off of them, um, we we can make what what Gateway makes selling. Uh, 33% of that or whatever and, and take over the market with it. Um, so they've dropped the price down to nine ninety five with no contract subscription. Um, that gives you access to up to one movie per day um, without blackouts. Um, and you can go to the movie anytime, any time of the week, any time of the month, go check out a movie and then come back tomorrow and watch a different movie. Or you could spend the next 30 days watching Spider-Man Homecoming over and over and over again. <laughs> no, Sorg. No. <laughs> no. For, for the mere price of $10. That's... No. I, I would consider this. Well, the and fun thing... Maybe not for that part, but as much as I go see movies... That, and that's what I'm saying is, I mean, if you went... So if you went to the movies once a week, so there's four weeks, it's about 12 bucks a, yeah. a hit, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So 48 bucks. Yeah. for the month, you can now do that for 10 and I don't have to, and I don't have to wait till my bargain Tuesday since I you don't have, have a day through. job or anything like that. And no more waiting yeah. for bargain Tuesday. No more waiting. The, for the, the interesting thing is obviously, the, oh, sorry, a lot of the summer blockbusters are over. But I mean, we, I mean, they call it out right in here. You still got Blade Runner coming out. You still got the Last Jedi. You still, still got Thor Ragnarok. I mean, there's yeah. still a plethora of movies that even if you just went to one movie a month. You're, if you're, you're doing if okay. You're doing okay because, like we said, it's typically twelve bucks a throw, mm. and you're paying nine ninety five mm. for the month. And there's no longer a subscription. I think it used to be you had to sign up for like three or six month minimum. And as it is, all I go to are Cinemark and AMC when I go see a blockbuster movie. So there you go. Well, so you're set. It's funny that you brought this up because Malengo, mm-hmm. our friend who oh, used geez, to use, he would make mm-hmm. a killing at this. I saw a, him tweet about this literally moments before the show. And so I love that the, <laughs> you're, that he's not the only one that's looking at this as an option. He will be he he will be the canary in the coal mine for this for us, I think. Because, uh, <laughs> if, if, if you're he, listening, Malango, tell us how it, how it's he going. He is the the movie goer. I saw him trying to pass off some some uh, passes for tonight. On so the, there's no limitation on the time of day, even when you can. No, go? no apparently not. not even like a, wow. It's not like you have to go to the matinee show or anything yeah. like that. 
It um, just uh, it, it, well, I don't know. If, did you mention that it doesn't apply to 3D or IMAX screenings? I, 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 did I imagine not that. It, it doesn't include those luxury seats at uh, at AMC. But man, mm-hmm. if I if it's just like hey, throw two bucks at us and you get the the reserved seats, I'm in. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I've done that before too. I've used I mean I've used a pass and then paid whatever it was to I think it was right, four dollars right. or something to bump myself up to the reserved seating. Right, so. right. Or or Cinemark is all reserved seating now. For mm-hmm. instance, they just they just retrofitted all that stuff in Robinson. So and so uh, and actually AMC just bought Carmike too. Oh really? Yeah, all the ones oh. out in the South Hills are all AMC's now. So mm. Mm. there's that. By the way, support your local theater as well as I give five dollars a month to my friends at Hollywood Theater here in Dormont, uh, just down the T line. Uh, but for everybody else, uh, there's this idea. So that's this 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 is a game changer. This is great. So why is it? The question is, why did that enter the market? Is it because movie viewership is down and they're trying mm-hmm. to compete with an old Netflix? I mean, obviously, that's they're trying to entice somebody to go do it. There's there's a hole in the market somewhere. I, I think I think it's it's a combination of it. There, there's <clears throat> viewerships down. The time span of when a movie leaves the theater to when it's released for digital download is shorter uh I, well even even that i'm shocked i'm watching rogue one on netflix and it, like then four the, months the time, after it came out what is this and the, the time from so the the, the time shortened if, if you remember back in the back in the day um when when a movie came out to rent you if remember purchasing if you tried to purchase one of those vhs tapes you're talking 200 dollars for the tape then when yep. dvds came out to get people to dvd DVDs were released the same day as the rental for $15. So that moved people to DVDs. Now you have the window shortening for digital download, and then usually two weeks to a month later, you're getting the, the DVD release. We don't do VHS anymore or Laserdisc. But so all of that, well, those windows. Mo- most of us don't. <laughs> most of us don't. <laughs> Katie is still sitting on a big box of VHSs out there. And I think Dirt is too. I don't know if he has a VCR anymore, but. I think he's sitting on a Wait, slew of tapes. Didn't Chachi just give you a bunch of his VHS tapes? Oh, no, he tried to, and I actually denied it. <laughs> or maybe, no, it was a CD. It's he CDs. He yeah. gets points on that. <laughs> or was it CDs? His anti-hoarder group is working really well. Oh, I'm yes. like, I got I got Google Music. No, no, no. You know what's anti-hoarder? <laughs> Getting get Netflix, Google Music, and ultraviolet uh, digital downloads. You know, I mean, that, that that that's why, like, I took all my DVDs off the shelf. I'm like, why are these just sitting here? Because I just, if it's not on my Plex server or, or this, then I don't care. Yeah. You know, I'm not pulling that off the shelf and playing it. You know, we were just talking about on, on uh, Gold, all the digital copies of games that I have. You know, it, it, like that's why my game collection hasn't physically grown because of digital. And that's actually kind of relieving. <laughs> right? Because could you imagine? Right. So that's the new TV show in the future. Dropbox hoarders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, I am a big Dropbox hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. And, and there's the show title. <laughs> But, but, but when you think about it too, so I can pay twelve dollars. So so the average date night for Carla and I go to the mo- to go to the movies, and this doesn't even include going to dinner, is usually around forty bucks just for the movie. By the time you get a drink, a thing of popcorn, I'm not a mm. popcorn fan. I get a box of candy. You're talking an easy forty to fifty bucks. I can wait three months, and I can actually own the movie on physical or 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 soft media for usually anywhere between nine ninety nine and fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. If I wait even a month past that, it's mm-hmm. probably going between nine ninety nine and a dollar. So there there's a big cost play there when you think about it. Um and, and I'm sure that's one of the, the reasons viewership's down because there, there it is a it is a cost to go out. Um and then to your point, even if you want to wait an additional couple months, then it, you're it's on Netflix. It's on TBS. It's on. It's everywhere. Well, if you're going out in the movies and spend that money, well, maybe you want a snack while you're on your way. I I came across this. I I think this might have been actually sent to me as a as a, a Uber and Lyft uh, driver, and, and and I'm not doing it as much these days. You know, maybe about like three or four times a, a month at this point. But this one's called Cargo. Go to Cargo dot today. By the way, there's dot today as a domain. Um, <laughs> And, and, you know, it's really kind of pushing to, like, guys like me that, that they're doing, you know, the, the Uber thing. Um, it, 
but okay, I won't get into that part of it. But it, it's this idea that you know there's the chips and and actually I found this because there was a big um, thing from Kellogg saying that Kellogg's breakfasts are now included in this, and you have this console thing that you strap in and it has everything in 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 this little uh, container, right? Uh, ready to go and I guess people sign up on the cargo website they set up their account and then you'll get a text and and make 50 cents off of whatever you need to retrieve for them so one, one of like one, one, one thing I completely had this idea while I was driving six months ago um, and somebody else is trying to do like a vending service um, as well here in the city that I keep getting past cars for and I've actually seen some some signs for but um, but this is kind of like it makes sense to have like convenience items like this right in a car on, on, on you know in, in your uber when you're going somewhere because I don't know how many times somebody's like, can I stop by the convenience store or something, right? And if you have it in there, it's another income addition to it. Uh, so so there you go. Although they, they say like the best drivers make like a, like 300 bucks a month for this. It seems like a lot of effort for 300 bucks extra Boy, a month. yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, I, I guess I mean, it is more. If you were one of those guys that used to restock the candy box at work, you know what I mean? Where <laughs> people had to drop in 50 cents. Exactly. You know what that was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But this I mean, but again, but there also some of the testimonials are saying like now I'm a five star, like how their, their ratings have up because they had this available. So that can lead to that or tips or, or something like that probably too. Um, so The okay. upsell, I love it. What would you think if you got in an Uber and they're like, hey, you need a candy bar or something? Go, go with that. I'm wondering how easy is it for you to sign up for? For it because you gotta, you know, attach your bank account. You know, and everything can we see like that, that picture again? There, yeah, yeah. I'll pop it up here. It's right down there. Um, here's here's my question with it. I know that when you first crazy. started driving, like we read up on the f- tips and tricks, and one of the tips and tricks was having a kind of like a, a go bag type of thing in the car. Yeah, and, and like we had like candy and water for everybody, mm, and you know, yeah. Like, but did you? But they didn't say to sell it. But you could. Well, it and even so, stop you. like people. We didn't sell it, and people really didn't use it much, so we decided no. to mm. stop doing it because it didn't make sense. Look at that guy's so happy. <laughs> I saw the picture of Skittles, Skittles. quite frankly. I'd eat, I'd eat the profits right there, Skittles. Yeah, that's a problem, too. I'd have that's, to give away the orange ones, but green and purple would be mine. Yeah, just as long as you're not missing, mixing a one of the apple-flavored with the lime flavored because they're both green and they look the same oh okay that, that, doesn't oh, that go happened so well. to you the other day that's right yes. that's right we had, we had a little <laughs> wonderful care package skittle and, protocols yes, yes exactly don't mix the different kinds of skittle like, bags ooh, together they're lime ooh, you yes. might die you never know lime. you never know what you're gonna get um all right well on that point uh chill anything else you want to touch on before we get we're, we're, going so re- real quick and we were talking about linkedin earlier one of the things I think is interesting, LinkedIn lost a preliminary battle today to protect their data against pretty much data, I think they're called skimmers. Um, so there, there, were, there were companies that were taking and just inventorying all, inventorying all of the LinkedIn network and all the data. Mm-hmm. Um, and LinkedIn filed an injunction while they lost the injunction, which will be interesting to see what becomes of this. So will people just start data mining all the social networks for, mm. for everyone's data? So will we'll setting your profile to, uh, you know, private or, and those kinds of things become a much bigger deal as, as people are scraping all these massive amounts of data. And, and when you think about LinkedIn, obviously it's, in, it's, it's, pretty much the resumes of, of everyone mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, hopefully uh, they said they're going to raise it to a higher court. I'm interested to see how this goes, but uh, I think this is going to be an interesting story to follow um, as, as, as it, as it evolves. Yeah. I was, I was seeing some news about this and again, having a legal profession background, I was like, Oh, this, this is, Oh, um, now appealing it to a higher court. That's, that's always an option. That's probably what they're working on as we speak. Um, I could seriously see this going to like one of the Supreme Court level things just because of the impact that it potentially has. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like you said, that's my that's my resume site. I don't put that information on Facebook because that's not where I want it. But if somebody's looking, how many times have you applied for a job and they've used your LinkedIn profile mm-hmm. to fill in your your history and your background? 
totally yeah, agree. There's a lot of information there that. <laughs> I guess the deal is you put it up there to be public, and I can go read it. So why can't somebody else save it? Huh? Yeah. I mean, I could screenshot yeah. it. And it's kind of interesting. Kind of un- yeah. unintended consequences. Well, right? and the other yeah. the other aspect is, is that, like, generally speaking, if the people that I'm friends with on LinkedIn, I know in some capacity, or they know somebody close to me, so it's it's like a secondary type of thing that you know if it's a if it's somebody that you're friends with i trust that you're friends with them and Don't. i can then be friends with them yeah i, I know that, that's probably <laughs> my problem right there yeah but to think that other people could have access to to that data aside from that is that's the scary part yeah for sure wow <laughs> so much for getting free donuts on your birthday it's not worth having <laughs> your birthday up there oh yes, well seriously. that was the depressing <laughs> one so well, we got a lot of stuff coming up here. Uh, Missy, you are doing a boot camp tomorrow night here in the Beachview area. Oh, I thought I was fighting Mewtwo in uh No, 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 not that part, not that <sighs> part. That's another story. Yes, uh, I will be teaching people how to look at statistics. Yay! But not in the typical, hey, these are stats, and you know they're really mm-hmm. boring way, but the, hey, these are stats, and you should really pay attention to what they're telling you about your demographic and your data and your content and all this other stuff so check that out that's on the carnegie library in beachview and information's on the event section over on pod camp pittsburgh it's gonna be 6 p.m um on wednesday and you you know where else this information is sorg Mm -hmm. right in our window right in our window for all you podcasters here that that go by our window yeah um so there's that too (laughs) uh and also we just announced uh the return of sorgatron media coffee that i'm relabeling creative coffees uh that's going to be coming up here on september 9th invite you guys down here we're gonna have free coffee we don't know where we're gonna source that to uh, from because there's not a coffee shop in our neighborhood yet, yet. and black forge is like a neighborhood over so we are uh, gonna figure that part out but uh but there will definitely be coffee of some variety i can guarantee you that and a lot of fun and uh and of course uh, we invite all of our all of our podcast friends and, and video friends and and creative peoples and uh, in and outside of the sorgatron media uh, uh, network to to join us here, John Chamberlain. I finally spelled your name right after ten minutes of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice. Yeah. I was like, I'm like, I don't think I, I don't think I did that right, and I went to check it. <laughs> uh, well, well, she'll, well, so you creeped on my LinkedIn page. That's saved right. My that's data. right. Exactly. <laughs> I saved your data. And updated your title. <laughs> Where can people check out what's going on with you? Is there anything coming up you want to plug? Or well, anything? let's see of here. The podcast. Um, uh, let's see. Well, yeah, certainly listen to the podcast every week. I appreciate that, and they can hear your guys' voices. You yeah. see on the opening yes. every yes, week. Yes. Uh, our porch tour is winding down and we're getting ready. We're planning a reunion porch tour this year for everybody who won the porch tour and all the Ooh. guests on the porch tour. We're going to go to one place and have dinner and record a podcast from there. So it's going to be the mega porch tour. It will be. Yeah. And, uh, I can't say just yet where it's going to be, but it's going to be at a really cool place with a guy who used to wear black and gold on a field that was 100 yards long. And, so uh, <laughs> you're, going, you're going to Olive Garden, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, I would do that too for all of uh, anything. Olive else. Garden with Sound Virgil. And Garden, yeah. uh, and uh, what else do we have coming up? Um, we have, uh, uh, we're, we're getting ready to start a Pittsburgh game show where uh, we will be able to entertain and do certain things in bars and because we want to hang out in bars. So we have the Pittsburgh Game <laughs> Show coming up, which includes an adapted version of the, of um, oh, I just lost the name of it, uh, you know, with the dots on the floor and the spinner. Um, Twister? Twister. Twister. It's going to be called the Fort Pitt Tunnel. So everything gets in a twisted mess before you win the game. <laughs> and it slows down. Absolutely. <laughs> and somewhere along the way, you want to put your foot down on a certain target and a cone goes there and you can't. So the Pittsburgh game show will be coming out soon. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm I'm already getting like anxiety just thinking about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're going the right way with that one. <laughs> it's amazing. Go check out everything your Jag Off is doing, please. And uh, again, good to see you at the uh, the raw the raw pre party. I was just like, I didn't expect you here. You know, at Justin Labar's. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, right. Thing, yeah. Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it was totally cool. Yeah, we hanging out. Justin's a part of the you know gang, and uh, he's been on. The, well, you were on the podcast with him when the day we shot it. Uh, Recorded it at a wrestling ring. So, mm-hmm. yeah, totally cool. Yep. I always appreciate coming on and seeing you guys. Mike, you are the guy. And you and Missy, as I always say, 
I credit you for my first pod camp for the only two people, hey, don't the first two people that were really nice to me. Not don't the blame only us two. for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's the other people that are going to blame you for that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but you're like, oh, let me show you around this old guy. So totally cool. You guys are uh, friends of the podcast forever. Thank you. you know? Thank Yay. you. John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. Chillatech.net. Come find me. Come talk to me on Facebook. I gotta mess with, has that plate been there the entire time? That plate has been there the oh. entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Even before he sat down. Yes. Sorry. Oh, okay. No, no there was. Yeah, I put it here. <laughs> I had pizza on it. Okay. Okay. Then that is allowed. Once I gave one of the ten that I had to him. <laughs> <laughs> I was chilly. Goes to get some them. pizza. Is there any more plates left? And we look over at John, and he's holding four plates with his two slices of pizza. <laughs> Uh, I think that was his way of saying, I don't really want to share this pizza because it's nope. so it could be good. Nope. Yeah. Nobody, I guess nobody else can uh, get hey, any. I grew up in Mickey's Rocks. I know how to get stuff out of here, man. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Watch it and check him before he leaves out the door. And, of course, check out everything at awesomecast.com. And so, uh, check us out on the uh, Facebook page live stream. Join us here live on Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And thank you to our awesome chat room, Amanda Wheels, Brandon, and the whole crew out there you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com